like the only traveling musicians were the actual travelers themselves, the itinerants or the, the thinkers of the time. And they were bringing music kind of all over the country. And in some ways, I, I feel like uh, you know, we're kind of more modern day travelers, except like, you know, we're, we're traveling by different means, planes and cars and what have you, and we're, we're going much farther afield. Like I'd be bringing an aspect of East Clare music all the way maybe to San Francisco and down to Sydney. And but, I mean, basically what we do is we travel, live off our music, and, and, you know, share it and express it and teach it, you know? So we all meet each other all the time, uh, like ships passing in the night. And there's something really nice about that, you know? You, you kind of, you meet and you have a drink and you say, well, time, I have to go and get my plane now. One night in uh, Seattle, like it was, I had just come back from Ireland and all of a sudden I had this impulse, I must go down and visit my brother Pat, you know, which meant I thought I was sitting in my house back in Clare, and I was going to walk down the avenue and visit my brother. I actually thought that for a second, you know, and then I realized, you know, you're actually about 7,000 miles away from his house right now. And, it, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know. home here, you know, there, there's been competition, not competition, but so many of, of us were such a small community. I mean, we couldn't earn a living here just playing in Ireland and uh, unless we wanted to play in bars and pubs and clubs. And if he was based in Ireland, he'd tour Ireland maybe once a year, you know, and then in America, uh, the population's so big, you can tour continuously. It is amazing everywhere we go there is Irish music and there's an Irish pub and there are Irish players. But I'm, I'm beginning to think that there might actually be more people playing traditional music in the United States than there is in Ireland. I think the, the point is that maybe Irish music just doesn't dwell in this island entirely anymore, you know. Or that it doesn't necessarily dwell inside the world of Irish people. There are sessions of music in Moscow, there are sessions of music in Japan, in Tokyo, there's music in North Dakota and South Dakota, all over the world. And they're playing traditional music. They're playing it because they like it. And it's music that they do. Martin even was up in Alaska and uh, he found bootleg tapes of a tape he did with his dad, you know, in, in Alaska. And they only made 500 tapes and he's finding them in Alaska, you know. So it's, it, it's definitely a, a world music at this point. Ireland's becoming the end place at the moment. Like everywhere that I travel, for instance, I was in Japan recently, and uh, the Japanese just want to know everything Irish, and not alone the music, but the culture, the artists, the writers. 
Hi. I'm a music teacher. I've been teaching in university, yes. Uh, and then I, I also teach Irish music. Uh, I teach Japanese folk music as well, yes. But Japanese folk music is not popular. Uh, almost no Japanese, pe Japanese people know about our own traditional music. It's a pity. I wrote a book about Irish music in Japanese, and then I wrote about Martin Hayes and also Tal Kelly Band. And the 7,000 copies were sold out already, so I'm very happy. Some people might say his music is not traditional, but I don't think so. His music is based on real, authentic, traditional, especially in, in East Korea. Generally, Irish people abroad, if they, if they never particularly listened to Irish music at home, um, might find the whole thing quite exciting, that now the, the kind of world is accepting this and kind of hailing it as a particular art form. A lot of people you meet, recent immigrants, will say, I, I never listened to Irish music until I came to the States. So obviously they, they regard it as a link with what they've left. As they've been forced to move around a lot, they've been forced to cope with different kinds of circumstances uh, and they've been forced to adapt in order to survive. Uh, and I think that's exactly what the music does and it's why it has that kind of place in the Irish psyche. And Petty Fahey wrote all these tunes and just called them Petty Fahey's and... Uh, uh, so this doesn't mean anything, I'm just telling you this. And, uh, but it was written by uh, this fiddle player from Galway and... Uh, it's a long, long way from Galway to here, so we thought you might be interested. <laughs> is a great country to be based in. I feel because there is such an amalgamation of cultures there. I like to live in a place where if, if you try, if you have an idea and you want to try something, nine out of ten people say, give it a go. In Scotland, nine out of ten people say, it'll no work. You know? developing our view as a person into whatever you could potentially be and the complete freedom to do so. I don't think there's any piece of land in America that I could ever really own or feel like that's me. Like, I don't think if I lived there all of my life till I was 90, I don't think I'd have that feeling like of, of the land so much as, as, as I do here, you know. I feel this, this spot here is me, it's my family, it's my past. Are you all set there? The 
Fetal Festival was put together, I think, you know, without a, a big, like, objective in mind, you know, and it was just basically to celebrate the area and to celebrate the music locally and to just bring in musicians. It was a matter of local pride and above all festivals, I think, in its genesis, it's, it's about celebrating the area. Here in Sebastopol, which is like just about two hours, I think, probably north of San Francisco, uh, this is a Celtic festival, but it, it's also kind of, I suppose, a community festival here. And there's, you get a kind of convergence of, of people with kind of different interests. There's a lot of, of people here who have a, a, a Scottish cultural interest, people who have an Irish cultural interest, people who are kind of into folk music, people who are into uh, Renaissance music and into what have you, you know, there's, there's, there's a kind of a convergence of people with those varied interests gathering here, you know. Scott, but uh, you know, we're all Celts. All Celtic music would include Irish music, but not all Irish music would include Celtic music. Maybe I lump it all together, but as I listen to more of it, I think I'm, I'm learning the distinctions between it. It's not the kind of music I hear on the radio or hear on MTV or something. This is, this is down to the root, this type of music. Like I find the people are very open to the experience. Like they, 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 they've, they've come with an open mind. It feels like in an open heart. They're, they're not here to, to pass judgment. They're here to experience it. You know. If all these people are communicating so much, then there's bound to be a kind of an, a coming together of ideas, which means a loss of the regional. You know, the, the beautiful little thing that only ever happened in this backwoods wee place. The, the regional style seems to, seem to be kind of evening out a bit. I mean, maybe it's because a lot of people are learning from records and stuff like that, I don't know. Well, Donegal style is um, characteristic of being energetic, um, sometimes maybe aggressive and uh, robust, while uh, Mar Martin's completely different to all of that. Musicians, they're very strict in how they play, and you know, they were influenced a lot by Michael Coleman and James Morrison and the Sligo style, and you can hear that all over the States. And it's a great, it's another, we'll say, type of music now within the Irish framework of traditional music. 